<laughs> hey guys, it's Adam. Sorry for the long time it's been since I updated anyone what's going on. I was waiting for this moment. One of our A-Dub Club athletes in her second triathlon completed a 70.3 distance under brutal high winds, high heat conditions, and I'm doing a Skype interview with her halfway around the world. It's midnight there, 7 o'clock in the morning here. And I uh, just wanted to talk to her and let her introduce herself and talk a little bit about the race. Well, I'm Ellie, part of the A-Dub Club tri team. <laughs> what else? 23 years old, at uni still, finishing off science this year with fingers, toes, cross medicine, post-grad medicine next year. I just wanted to get you to get an update now that you're, uh, you've jumped in both feet into triathlon. And you start off with a really tough half Ironman. So, like, the week before the race, what was going through your mind? Well, I had a really busy week with work and stuff, so it kind of just, like, snuck up on me. Like, I'd been, like, it was there, and I was like, oh, I've got to get this done, I've got to get this done, I've got to get this organized. Before I knew it, it was Friday. It was time to really, like, actually put everything together. So, I think just beforehand, I was, like, nervous, but I think I was more just sort of anxious about getting everything organized and I was like really about completing it. It was just about like getting everything right to be there kind of sure. thing, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think I was just in awe of all the crazy, amazing bikes and equipment that was all around me. Again, it was just because I haven't got a lot of race experience, it was, okay, am I doing this right? Is this the right setup? It, you know, I remember I had to go ask some people just how drinks were handed out on, like, oh, on the bike. Mm -hmm. like, I just didn't know. I was like, surely they don't give us cups, but, you know. I was just, <laughs> so how about um, when you're putting your swim cap on and you're lining up? Um, I was, it was all women. Um, probably like ages 18 to 34 or something like mm -hmm. that. I just st sort of stuck to the back because, yeah, I wasn't really, yeah, I just knew I wasn't going to be competitive or mm. anything like that. So I was happy to sort of just sit at the back a bit um, and take off after everyone else. I was there with my family, so they're kind of, you know, I jumped in the water briefly <clears throat> and watched the pros start and that sort of thing and they helped me like with the wetsuit and all that. So I was kind of just talking with them and, getting anxious with them. It was quite it was quite a windy day, so it was a lot more chop than what I've really swum in before. So it was kind of just trying to get into a rhythm amongst all that and even just sight the boys because, you, you know, stick your head up sometimes and all you could see was waves. So right. trying to, like, get up over the top and that sort of thing, yeah. I thought I was holding an awesome line and then I kind of look up again and everyone else seemed to be, like, 50 metres over that <laughs> way. Oh, okay, then better get back over there. <laughs> You came out of the water. How'd you feel running up the transition chute? That run is always really tough, <laughs> coming out of the water and trying to get vertical again and start moving. I felt so good to be out of the water. Somehow it felt a lot longer than the 1.5k swim that I'd done. Maybe because the waves were huge? I think so, yeah, <laughs> possibly. I was happy to be out of the water and I had kind of, I hadn't gone too hard in the swim really. Just made the transition, got on my bike as quickly as I could. Looking back at my transition transition times, I improved so much from my first oh, one. Oh, great. It's where I improved the most. <laughs> and then it was onto the bike and trying to get all that sorted again, make sure I hadn't forgotten anything and yeah, off you go. One of my little mistakes, I put a drink bottle in though. One of them was in and it was like too big really for the cage. It was really tight. I couldn't actually get it out until about more than 40 k's through oh, the ride. No. So um, finally just ended up ditching it and managed to get another one. But I think by that stage I was actually pretty dehydrated. Mm. That bike leg was really tough, really, really tough. It was windy as well. Really windy. I actually noticed the wind, the heat didn't bother me so much as the wind. It was head, like we had massive headwinds all the way back into Geelong, which was just this big, long stretch of not much. And it was just headwind for kilometres and kilometres and kilometres and not that much to break it up, apart from the occasional crosswind, which nearly blew you off your bike. So oh, it was, wow. yeah, like to be honest, the bike leg was really tough. I didn't really enjoy it at all, <laughs> the bike leg. It was just wasn't a happy time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when you were coming into T2? In, on the bike, I had, like, my back had got really, really sore, and I, like, my back was almost cramping up and stuff, and I was actually worried that I wouldn't be able to run, and I started running, and that was a much more comfortable position for me to be in, and, like, the back pain went away, the calf cramps that were coming managed to go away, um, and I, yeah, getting back into the run was, like, 
a lot better for me, I think. The bike I struggled with, but the run kind of got rid of all that, um, the pain that was had built up on the bike, mm-hmm. um, just sitting normally and stuff, and also with the tri bars. And I'm getting pretty, like, I'm fairly confident on them now. It just, yeah, it just wasn't happening on that day. <laughs> I was walking through the aid stations to try and make sure that I was getting something in because I knew I came off the bike dehydrated. Mm-hmm. But, like, there were, a few, there were a few sections with the wind where it was just, like, uh, it was just, like, I couldn't, there, I could have run it, but it was, I was walking into it, like, on an angle. So to be running into it, it was just silly. Like, I would have wasted so much more energy. So there were sections that I had to walk. I know that I've got a lot more to give under the right conditions and everything. So mm-hmm. You're in the last kilometre, and you know that finish shoot's coming up. What, did it? Did your mentality change during that piece? The one little thing was there was a guy not that far ahead of me, and I would could have, like, kind of... I didn't want to impact his finish either. So I was kind of running. I'm like, is he going to hurry up? Do I overtake him? Do I, <laughs> I, do I let him go in front? So I think I kind of sat back a little. Like I was finished strong, but I didn't rush it because I kind of just wanted the other guy in front of me to have his finish. And then I could come through, bump myself, uh-huh. um, which is kind of what I wanted. It was so cool running onto that, like the big M dot carpet though. It was so exciting and seeing my family there and everything. It was pretty cool. And when they said your name and, you know, you crossed the finish line, then what you were, how was that? Given how I felt on the, at some points in the bike, I was just so proud of myself for having finished it and just, like, the mental perseverance and stuff, I think, was a big deal for me. So, I, yeah, I got a little bit emotional for a second there. They had ice towels for us because it was so hot. Got the M dot towel around my shoulders. I love that towel. <laughs> Metal around my neck. And, yeah, it was very, very exciting. <laughs> yeah, that was a tough day like that. And you finished, what, six, 651 or somewhere around? Yeah, it was about 651. Yeah, it was a very long day. Six, <laughs> like six hours and 51 minutes of exercise. What's happening uh, in June? Oh, well, there's just this little event. <laughs> Might be the Cairns Ironman. <laughs> right, so you've, yeah. got, you've got about three and a half months until uh, mm, that race. Doesn't sound like much. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, you, uh, you know, what, are you, what are you trying to focus on during this time between now and, and then? At the moment, I'm probably still trying to spend as much time on the bike as what I can and really build that up. Especially because it's such a it's like such a significant part of the whole day. Mm-hmm. You know, congratulations on finishing uh, a seventy point three. Well, teammate of Clubbers, that is your teammate Airly Broomfield from Melbourne, Australia. Congratulations, Airly. Everyone else, peace out.